So my two key words were sharp and dull. And I'm going to express those keywords with some shapes that can be transformed into sharp and dull. My first order of business is to develop my color palette, my shapes to express those two keywords. And then I'll work on transitions. I'm gonna make a new composition by going down and clicking on the icon for new composition. You can also do that by going to composition, new composition. So whichever way is good for you, I'm gonna call this abstract loop. I'm going to make this a full 1920 by 1080 composition. So 16, nine aspect ratio, square pixels, 30 frames a second. And I know my final composition is going to be 15 seconds. So let's just set that now. And if you ever need to reset any of this, you can go up to composition and composition settings and you get that window again, right? One thing I want to do is set up a color palette. So to do that, I'm going to use a website called coolers.co. It's kind of a cool little website. And it actually will generate, auto-generate some compatible color palettes for you. So let me show you what I mean. So I'll start the generator. It gives you a range of colors that are compatible. And if you want to scroll through, you just press spacebar. You can click through until you find something you like. Hmm, that one's cool. And then when you're ready, go to export up here and we'll just export it as an image. Call this. whatever you like. And it's gonna open up this little preview window here on the Mac. What I'm gonna do is just move it into my project folder, super important. So take it out of downloads or wherever it went and put it into your project folder. Back in After Effects, I'm gonna import that image. We're going to file, import, import file or Command I. And I'm gonna select it and I'm going to just click off the create composition here and open it up. So now I get this color palette, which I can drag into my new composition. Now it's pretty large. All I need is a strip of those colors. So I'm gonna draw a mask around it. So just see this little strip of color, just so I can get an idea. So now this masks out the rest of it. So I can turn this visibility on and off as I'm selecting my colors. So the first thing I wanna do is to select a background. So let's actually make a background here. So layer new, solid. I'm gonna select with my eyedropper tool, a palette color that I think works for the background. So I'll go for a light background here. And again, I'll put that down below. And then I'm gonna draw my first shape. So let's draw a rounded rectangle and I'm going to click off my layers and then just re-click on. So with my fill color now, let's select that. Let's make this one something like that. And just having that palette up there helps is super helpful. So click off and now I'm going to draw a rounded rectangle. I'll get something like that and I'm gonna move it, color palette off, and I'm gonna move this down and select the layer and rename it. So the first order of business now is to take the rectangle. I'm gonna actually make two of them on my, from my design. So I have two rectangles. I'm gonna take the position, and drop this one down a little bit. So now they're kind of, two of them are in the frame, right? Make it nice and even here. 
something like that. So visually, so it works, right? And so you remember, I can control the size of these things independently, right? Or I can, in the whole layer menu here, I can control scale globally, right? But if I do that, I need to have my anchor points uh, in the middle of those of layer content, right? You can see it's scaling out from this point where the little crosshairs are, right? So I want it actually to be centered. So let's do that. So I'm gonna, with my selection tool, control click on that layer, go to transform, center point, center of the anchor point and layer content. So now when I scale my rounded, see that kind of scales evenly, right? But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start these off screen so I'll use P for position, and I'll just push them off screen. So I'll start my keyframe there, and I'm gonna have a pretty quick entrance effect here, so maybe at 10 frames. I'm gonna go into my Align menu, so if I don't see it, I'll just go Align, and I'm going to center it. So now I get this. Or I could actually do this, which might be actually even cooler. Just to have it kind of swell as it, after it gets in. So I just move those right over top of each other. So now I have this kind of thing. It's gonna swell up. Okay, so I've got this motion now coming in. Um, now it's time to alter the shape of those things. So let's go into each one, into the rectangle two. Let's start with the size, and I'm gonna unlink those elements. I just wanna make sure that we're past the point of our animation. And I'll hit size here as well. Let's hit a roundness one as well on both of them so I can alter that. Maybe just bring these back to this point. So I'll just use my arrow key here. I think that's pretty good. All right, just draw it right back here so I'm hitting the marks. All right, so coming in. Maybe what I'll do here is change this keyframe to like 100. So nice and round. So it goes 50 to 100 as it swells out. And then let's take, I'm going to do this X and Y. So it comes on and then the size here. grows to meet the other. So let's do 500. Likewise with this one, now we have a 500. So overlapping wise, it looks like that, right? And then let's do one, two, three, four, five frames. So now I got a full second for this, a full second for this whole transition, which sounds pretty good. I'm gonna extend these ones out. So now that it's, that becomes the background, right? So we get kind of a zoom here. So let's go 1200. And then I'll make this one size, right? 1200. And just by separating those two elements, you get a nice little effect. So let's preview that. All right, I can quicken that a little bit, I think. I like the pace. So I've already got a zoom transition coming in. I got kind of a wipe happening as well kind of a combo white. But I think this, right, needs to happen much quicker. So let's actually put them all in a little bit. So now let's preview that. That's much better. Right? And then I'll make them all easy ease. So I'm going to select them all with my box select tool, function F9. 
So it comes in now at the 20 frame mark, I'm gonna put another, another object in there. So I'm gonna hit my circle tool, my ellipse. I'm gonna draw that in. And let's get the palette up because we already, that's fine, I'm gonna put that underneath the palette, bring my palette up. Let's do something a little more bold here. I'm gonna take my preview. There, that looks pretty good. So now I've got that, and I'm gonna center this, right? And center the anchor point in layer content. And let's pull this palette off. I'll rename this. Now, now I need an animate on function for this one. So let's do my zoom in again. And I'm gonna make this one super bouncy, right? So at 20, it's zero. And five frames later, it'll be 100 and 20. And then two frames later, it'll be 100. So basically I get kind of a bounce coming in. Right, easy way to do that, right? Whoop, right? I'll make these easy ease. And I'm gonna go into my graph editor and just massage that out, right? So that kind of get a nice, nice pull. All right, Let's see what that looks like. All right, nice. Pretty dynamic so far. And I got a nice little color palette happening in there too. So, all right, so I got this happening. Now, this thing is looking pretty dull, soft, round at the moment, right? So now it's time to make it look a little sharper, right? So let's add a compound shape onto this. So what I'm gonna do here is click off again. I'm gonna add star tool. And again, I'll just draw my star. And I'm gonna align this. And I'm also gonna go into the poly star here and the path. And let's look at the points. Let's add some more points to this thing. So we've got a nice even 20, right? Let's see what that looks like behind the circle. Call this points. So that's what it looks like. So this thing could grow spikes, but I'm gonna use scale. So here it should be zero. And then it should grow to 120. And go back to 100, two frames later. So now I get kind of that. Let's have a look at this. There, so it's transitioned. And now with this thing, the two second mark say, let it kind of settle. And then we'll do a little rotation here. So let's start it there. And I'm gonna draw this back, so slower. So do a little anticipation, and I draw it back. And do back to zero here. Now in this, let's do the points. Let's hit the scale again. So we're gonna hit another keyframe and then move it ahead five frames, maybe seven frames, make it a little slower. We'll go to 120 again, anticipate this movement. And go back to zero. So now it's Now 
I'm also going to scale out my circle. What that looks like. Hmm. I like it. I want to get back to my first frame, right? So that would be that, right? I need to get these green rounded shapes off the screen. So let's do that now. So let's take the rounded scale. Let's bring them back down to, down to 100. So now we're looking at them like that. And then in each of them will independently hit the contents, the path line, the size, right? We'll make a size keyframe here in one, and a size keyframe in two, and then in five, keyframes. Let's bring this one down to say 500. Looks pretty good. And that one to 500. And then I'm going to take the position here of this one, the position of that one. All right, so it's the Y. I'm going to just take it off screen. All right, so now it's off. And then this one goes above it, right? So just getting different exit effects, a kind of wipe, right? And I can make those easy ease keyframes and just fine tune this in the graph editor, fit all graphs to view. There's my little movement. So I'm just gonna See what that looks like. Good, and then I'll do the same thing up here in this position one. So we'll view those. Those are not Bezier yet, so let's go back out and make them Bezier. So function F9 on a Mac, and hit graph editor, and just peek these out a little bit. So it doesn't have to be matchy matchy, but roughly matching. So Let's go back out and look at this whole thing. So now, that's a good looking loop. I've got some sharp and dull in there. I've got a transition of the zoom transition. I've got some wipes as well. And I go back to my beginning frame. Looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is zoom out here. And what I'm going to do is make this a pre-composition. So I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I mean. I'm going to take my visible layers here. And I'm going to control click on it and go to pre-compose. And I'm going to call this loop. So now, and I'm just going to trim it there, or trim it at five seconds, my bad. So I've got it in one composition. I'm going to just copy it twice and just spread it out across the frame. So I'm making sure that each of these, there's no gaps between them, right? So it repeats three times. So now we have a little dynamic animation based on my keywords, sharp and dull, or in my case, dull and sharp. We have it looping three times. We have our transitions. We have our anticipation that I added in there with the graph editor. We have some slow in, slow out with the easy ease keyframes. And we worked our transitions, zoom and wipes. So this is going to look different for everybody. But what I'd like you to do is apply those concepts and those skills we learned over the past four weeks into your own composition.